Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. This is Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To all old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Thank you for being here today. A few things before we get started with today's video. This is this is a little bit of a more this is a little bit of an unstructured video. So, I am trusting the the spirit of the Lord that he will lead me through the, the maze of things that I feel led to share today. So many things have been on my mind for the last few days. I've really been taking more time to sit aside with the Lord so that I can have a better understanding of how to deliver these many words that he has entrusted me with over, over a period of, of about 10 years now. And as we come to certain topics, I really need the Lord's help. I really depend so much on the guidance of his spirit to know how to bring out some of the things that I will be touching upon in the weeks, um, in the weeks ahead. So before we start, thank you for joining the channel. Please give the videos a thumbs up if you are so led, because it helps, it helps the content get shared more with other people so that other people see it pop up on their recommended and things like that. Or you can also share the video directly to somebody that you know, somebody that you feel the Lord wants you to reach out to, to help them open their eyes, to help them come into a deeper understanding of what God is telling us in these times. And I also have other channels. I have a channel on Brighteon. I have a channel on BitChute. I have a channel on Rumble, and I have a Spanish channel where these where these prophecies are all translated for ease of those who are Spanish speaking. So please always check the description box below so that you can get a better understanding of other platforms that you can support the master's voice on. You can share from those other platforms. And without further ado, let's go into what is not exactly a structured word for today. So I do not even have a title for this message yet, but I will trust the Lord that by the end of it, it would become coherent and then perhaps I will know what to say. And so I would like to point out today, um, a little bit about this channel. This is a prophetic channel that the Lord God has raised up in the earth for these times. Now, prophecy is many things to many people, but the understanding of prophecy that I have from the scripture is that it is the revelation of the heart of God for these times to men. So it is the revelation of the heart of God to a vessel that he has chosen, he has shaped, he has certainly spent a lot of time chipping and shaping and preparing that vessel so that that vessel is able to act as a worthy containment for the things that the Lord is saying. Prophecy is not where people gather together to have discussions about what they think the Bible means or what they think the Bible says. That is Bible study, or that is just the gathering together of the saints. That is iron sharpening iron, but that is not exactly, in fact, that is not at all what the master's voice is. The Lord gave this work its name. The Lord is the one who raised up this work, and the Lord is the author of everything that I am reading here on camera. So these are words that the Lord has revealed to me by his spirit for me to make known to his people. And especially with this topic that we're in, the topic of the fallen, the topic of angels mating with women, the top, the topic of, um, incursions into the earth of creatures who were not given the right and the authority by the Lord Jesus Christ to come out of their first domain and begin to mingle themselves with the seed of men such that there have now been terrible consequences upon the human race. Humanity as we know it is no longer pure. And as we go deeper into these things, it's very, very important to me that if you come to this channel, you will come to this channel with a heart that is willing to hear what the Lord is saying. So if you come to this channel and you are so full of yourself, I spoke in multiple videos 
last year about what I call, what the Bible calls the anatomy of a fool. And foolishness is being full of error and yet thinking that that error is truth. It is a very foolish thing not to know something that you think you know or claim to know. Because what happens is if you are full of error, if you are full of the pride and the arrogance of thinking that you actually know something when you don't, because the Lord has not chosen to reveal it to you at this stage in your life, or because you have been in societies or you have been in communities where all the information available is corrupted, which means it is not genuine. It is not of the spirit of the Lord. It is not true. And yet you have believed upon this with all your heart. You are at great risk of walking in this continued ignorance, which is foolishness until the day that these things come to fruition upon the earth. And then you will find yourself in that tragic community that I call the Luke 21, 26, where it says men's hearts failing them for the things that will come upon the earth. So there are things that are going to come upon the earth. There are things that are already upon the earth and they are beginning to, what can I say? To stretch themselves like a man who was sleeping in a bed who all of a sudden, because of an internal clock in him, wakes up and realizes it's high time that I woke up. And that person sleeping in that bed, unfortunately, is the devil. That person sleeping in that bed is Satan. All the wickedness and the evil that we see upon the earth at present is nothing to be compared to the things that will come upon the earth in the last days. And so if you are someone who has been laboring under many of the prevalent misconceptions that are here in the United States, misconceptions about the time that the Lord Jesus will be coming back to receive his church to him in glory, misconceptions about who this nation in the Bible called Mystery Babylon is, misconceptions about this topic that I am handling right now at the moment with the Lord's help, that angels came into this earth and made it with women. If you are deceived about these things, then I, I put it to you that in this brand new year of 2022, it would help you to get yourself a clue. It would help you to get yourself some information. It would help you to realize that if you are full of error, then you are in danger of walking and living as a fool. One who has no room for new information that will shift and change the paradigm, shift and change the understanding understanding so that you can come into the end times wisdom that is the Lord. So on this channel, unfortunately, I'm not running a Bible study. I'm not running a feedback channel where I need people to come and give uh, their view and their interpretation because I am not making suggestions here. I am reading out the real time revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so to those who have a heart to receive these things, you will be blessed by them. You will be taught by them. Even if they are initially frightening or outside of your purview, which means the worldview that you had, the mindset, the perspectives that you had, if you will take some time, this is not a channel where one or two videos is going to do it for you. There are about 150 videos here, and last I checked, I still have about 300 prophetic words of the Lord to get through. This is why I've said that I'm not going to be making every single video. I'm only going to make a certain group of videos per theme as the Spirit of the Lord leads, and then I will move on to the treatment of another matter. So, so far, I've, car I've carried out prophecies about the invasion that will come here from Russia and China. This invasion will leave the United States not in a defeated state as if there's going to be a war that is equally balanced between the three nations. It's actually going to be an annihilation. The Lord says that he will use Russia and China as his weapons of war, his weapons of punishment and indignation. And with those weapons, the Lord will tear down everything that the United States represents. America is going to be basically wiped off the map in a single hour, exactly as it is written in Revelation chapter 18, when it says Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city. In a single hour, she has received 
all her judgments from the Lord. It says in Revelation chapter 18 that the smoke of Babylon bur Babylon's burning will ascend to the heavens. And indeed, the Lord has given me prophetic visions and dreams where I saw that I was suspended above the earth and America was burning so badly in so many places that a thick black plume of smoke was visible from the air on satellite mapping on Google earth, you could see the country burning from that state. So there's the Russia and China prophecies where the Lord has talked about the fact that America's sin will not be for forgiven because her sin is engraved with a diamond pen. And therefore in the Russia and China prophecies, you can find out everything about how the Lord will raise Russia and China to end times supremacy. So if you come to this channel with your political motivation, and the fact that you're interested in chewing up whatever the news is telling you, oh, this is happening and that is happening. I'm actually speaking from a higher perspective. I'm speaking from the heart of the Lord concerning the things that America has done, the things that have grieved the father and the grievous punishment that he will unleash against this nation as judgment. I also did the America series in the America series. I think there's about 20 videos there, perhaps a little more. And in the America series, I was listing out and reading out on camera, the many sins that the Lord was addressing that America is guilty of same sex affiliation, homosexuality and marriage, um, abortion, murder, wars of aggression, many, many things that the Lord treated through a series of dreams and snapshots that I have taken the time painstakingly over the last three years to list these things. And so many times the Lord has pushed me to share a little bit personally, but I have always said to the Lord that I don't want to do that because my belief is that when the children of God hear the words of the Lord, they will know that it is the Lord speaking. This is not a channel where I'm selling anything to anyone. I strongly do not believe that God is like a used Mercedes Benz and you need to push him like a product so that people will be convinced. This is the Lord speaking. When the voice of the Lord is uttered in the earth, the people who have ears to hear, hear him. And that is because prophecy as an arrow of the Lord bypasses your race, your culture, your background, your ethnicity, your personal views, and definitely the American fascination with left and right, blue and red. Political affiliations control the minds of people in this country. Even Christians, the arrow of prophecy is sharp enough to pierce past all that and go into the heart so that when the true sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ hear his voice, they will know by which spirit the words are coming forth. However, there was, there was an experience in my life that I have never spoken about to other people and Many times I have started to share it in the video because of the insistence of the Lord, not by myself. I'm a strong advocate and I believe in privacy. And like I said um, in previous videos, my life is separate from the work that I'm doing here from the Lord. But this thing has been bubbling in my heart for more than 24 hours. And therefore, I will share a greatly edited version of this experience that I had with the Lord when I was a young woman and the Lord had started to lead me into truth, definitely not truth about Nephilim and things like that. But over the course of my life, God has always been front and center. And he has been very, very, um, dedicated to making sure that I understand what I am to him, who I am to him and why he has chosen me to do the work that he has called me to do. And so when I was a younger woman and I was still living with my parents as it happens in life, you know, sometimes you don't move out when you think you will. I had a normal evening and it was my habit, even as it is now, to stay up very late. I like to be up when it's late and when it's quiet, when everyone else is sleeping, the Lord shares many things with me. And so I was up late and I did some reading. And then when I was tired, I went to bed and I slept. At least I think I slept to this day. I am not sure if I actually slept or if I was having one of those experiences where I am in an experience that I cannot tell if it is actually happening or not. Because sometimes when I rest, I even can see things 
with my eyes closed. It is like I am watching through my closed eyelids in that suspended place where you are asleep and not asleep. So I went to bed and I lay down and I slept, I think. And after a while, the door of my room opened. So the door of my room opened and someone came in. This is not an actual person. This was a presence of a very great fire. This was the presence of a fire that was so hot that this fire had no appearance at all. So normally when we think of fire, we think it's either the normal orange fire that we see burning or sometimes in industrial and chemical applications, fire can be so hot that it will appear as a blue or even a white flame. But what came into my room was nothing like this. It was fire that was so hot that it bent the reality around it. So my whole room became like this in the presence of this supremely fiery presence that opened the door and came into my room. And when this presence came into my room, I could not move. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. And I could only move my eyes to mark the progress of this fire. So this person came into my room, extreme heat, flaming heat, and passed in front of my bed and went to the corner of my wall. So whatever hand this is, in the video, this is my left hand. So I'm, I'm lying here and at the corner of the wall, upon the wall that was next to my bed, a panorama of pictures appeared. So the, the whole world appeared and these pictures were the pictures of people in the world. So it was like, it was like a map with the continents there, but then you couldn't actually see the countries because they were completely covered with the pictures of people. And it was people living their everyday lives, people just doing whatever it is that people are doing. I saw pictures of uh, people studying. I saw pictures of people at work. I saw pictures of people, you know, taking a walk. I saw pictures of people working in the garden. I just saw people in their everyday life. And this fire became very small and concentrated. So it was a, a huge, tall heat and it became concentrated into a small ball. And this ball moved upon the wall and began to flit across the pictures on the wall like this. And whenever it would move, a picture would come up. So it would be like a projection and a picture would suddenly come up and I would be able to see, oh, that's a woman gardening in her garden. Oh, that's a boy playing with his dog. Oh, that's a, a girl reading a book or a man teaching a class. And this ball of concentrated fire was moving rapidly across like this to the different continents and the different countries. It was moving like this. And then it came and it hovered and a picture came up and I saw my mother. I saw my mother from the back and she was making dinner. And even though I could not see her and I could only see the lady from about here downward, I knew it was my mother. And I saw a very small child playing in the kitchen close to my mother. And this was my habit when I was a child. I loved to just be wherever she was. So she was making food and I was there and the fire hovered in front of that picture. And when the fire hovered in front of that picture, unlike all the other pictures before, that baby saw the fire. So the fire was in my dimension, in my room, and in whatever dimension that was with the pictures, the child in the picture saw the fire and ran to her mother and stood behind her mother's legs. And then she looked out from behind her mother's legs and she smiled and she waved at the fire. I've never shared this and this is very hard for me because I do not think that this is anyone's business to tell you the truth. The Lord told me to speak freely today. And as I was talking with him, I was telling him that it is not really anyone's business to have access to these kinds of things. These things are my things. I believe that all Christians should follow God with all their heart. If you want to follow yourself, or if you want to follow your atheism, or if you want to follow whatever other God excites you, then I'm not going to be the one to argue with you and try to convince you because God is not a cheap commodity that needs to be sold to human beings. 
This is what is missing in the modern church today. Pastors are not telling you that the person who is supposed to show reckless love and chase after the other person is actually us, the fallen human beings, who are supposed to be running after the eternal perfection of God with everything that is in us. Nobody has to convince you to live a holy life. Nobody has to convince you to live a righteous life. Nobody has to convince you to be true to Jesus Christ after the incredible sacrifice of flesh and blood that he has made for you. But now people have to beg you to go to church, beg you to stand up to worship, beg you to lift up your hands and show respect to the person who actually is keeping your lungs and your heart functional and has not allowed you to go into the grave and darkness under judgment for whatever sins may still be operational in your life. I do not believe that anyone needs to beg people to surrender to Jesus Christ and be holy. And so these things, I keep them in my heart because they are my private things. Every Christian should be seeking God and pursuing God until they come to the place where they have private things, private encounters, and moments that define who they will be upon this earth. I should not have to bring out my treasures to anyone to prove to anyone that I have the mandate of Christ and the authority to be here speaking. Nevertheless, because I have started, this child was able to perceive the fire, unlike all the other people that it was seeking across the earth. She saw it and she waved at it and she began to play hide and seek with this fire. And I saw that this presence, this fire hovered over that picture and it came to rest. It didn't move anymore and it wasn't looking for anybody anymore. And then I woke up out of that experience, whether I was sleeping or whether I was just frozen and seeing something and the wall of pictures was gone and the fire that was bending the dimensions and the reality of my room because of how hot it was, was gone. And I knew that the Lord was showing me, according to scripture, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I know where I put you. And I knew when I came to you, you would recognize me. So when you come to this channel, when you come to the master's voice and you see celestial speaking here, I am not having a discussion with you. And I'm not asking about the codexes that you have read or the greater revelation of the inner deeper Baptist church that you come from, where they told you that Sethite men slept with ungodly women. And that is how giants came to the earth. I am telling you that angels came down from heaven and slept with women. They defiled and polluted themselves. They were reported by the righteous angels to God, and God pronounced a terrible judgment upon the angels themselves, upon the seed that they brought on the earth. He judged them, and that they will for a time, for Satan will be given a short time to express everything that is in his heart. They will for a time wreak havoc upon this earth and after that for them for the righteous and for every sinner who refuses to repent of their sin there comes the judgment and so i will go into a few things i asked the lord and i said lord is it not time to to stop this series actually because i've made quite a few videos concerning ufos concerning the coming of creatures upon the earth, concerning the return of the fallen upon the earth. And I really thought, Lord, we've covered so much. Isn't it time to change to something else? And he said to me, Celestial, you have not even started to speak to them about the truth. And so I want to say to you today that if you do not have knowledge that is grounded in truth, you are walking in darkness and you are at risk from being harmed by the things that will come upon this earth. And not only must you have knowledge, not the knowledge that comes from pastors who are actually deliberately or without knowing, deciding not to teach these things. 
They do not have the revelation of the truth. And there are myths that have been taught in America as scripture for more years than I have been alive. One of those myths is that it's ancient Rome and that it's the Catholic Church. Who is Mystery Babylon? Mystery Babylon is the U.S. of A. And in the day that you see more missiles, more Russian missiles falling upon this country than I can count, you will understand what Pastor David Wilkerson was saying until he died. You will understand that God did not make a mistake when he sent Pastor Dimitri Dudeman here to declare to United States that you are Mystery Babylon. In that day, as your cries are rising to heaven, as you watch this nation burn from the east to the west coast, you will understand that it was the mercy of God that came to uncover the truth to you. But like a fool, you were too full of yourself to hear it. So the first thing we must understand is that knowledge must be grounded in truth. If you do not have the truth, everything you try to build upon that foundation will be nothing but deception. Secondly, knowledge must be practical. So we're going to take a practical look at the book of Enoch once more. We're going to look at, I think it's chapter nine, and I will just read here from my laptop what it says. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven, and they saw how much blood was being shed upon the earth, and they saw all the lawlessness that was wrought upon the earth, and they said to one another, the earth is being made without inhabitant. And it cries out with the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men are making suit and saying, bring our cause before the most high. And so they said to the Lord of ages, Lord of Lord, God of gods and King of kings and God of all ages, the throne of your glory stands unto the generations of the ages, and your name is holy and glorious and blessed unto all ages. You have made all things, and you have power over all things, and all things are naked and open to your sight. You see all things, and nothing can hide itself from you. You see what Azazel has done, how he has taught all unrighteousness on this earth, and he has revealed the eternal secrets that were preserved in heaven that men were striving to learn. And Semyaza, who you gave authority to bear rule over his associates, they have gone down to the daughters of men upon the earth, and they have slept with the women, and they have defiled themselves, and they have revealed to them all kinds of sins." Now the women have borne these great giants, and the whole earth has thereby, by them, been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now behold, the souls, and now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying, and they are making their suit to the gates of heaven. Their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of these lawless deeds that are done upon the earth. And you know all things before they come to pass. And you see these things, yet, Lord, you do suffer them. And you do not say to us what we are to do in regard to these. And so we see here that the righteous angels who have not sinned and who have not left their first estate, as we have constantly looked at Jude chapter 1 and verse 6, Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel are looking down from heaven, and they are looking at the lawlessness and the recklessness and the wickedness and the fornications that have come upon the earth because of the sin of the fallen angels. The fallen angels have come, and they have taken wives and cohabited with them. And there are people who are saying, oh no, the angels came and they raped the women Enoch says that the angels took them wives. When you take a woman to wife, you're not exactly raping her because it says that they took them to wives and they dwelt with them and cohabited with them. I don't think that people of this modern time understand the level of deception that fallen angels are capable of. It is as if they think that the Lord in his, I don't know, his lack of wisdom created things that are so hideous and ugly and repulsive that when they come to earth, men will see them and scream and run away. And yet the Bible tells us, it gives us a little hint of what the appearance of these angels would have and will be like when it says, for even Satan appeareth as an angel of light. 
When angels appear in their glory, as for instance, the angel that came and rolled away the stone at the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ, they can appear with so much brilliance and dazzling beauty that as the Bible says, when those soldiers saw the angel, they became as dead men. It doesn't mean that they actually died. It means that they went into a literal and instant coma and fell before the angels. As a dead man literally is the state that you find comatose people in, in the hospital. They have a pulse, but everything else about them is shut down. Brain activity is shut down. The organs are simply working on impulse, and it is as if the person is not there. When the angel appeared to Daniel to speak to him, the same thing happened. Daniel went into a dead faint, and he said that the angel actually had to revive him and stand him on his feet. When you stand before the angels of God blazing in their glory, you are not able to keep your feet. So let this be a warning to those of you who believe these people out there that are talking about angels, six and seven angels appearing to them in one night, and they stood there and they were able to have conversations with the angels and take notes, and they were not affected by it. You need to read the scripture and by the scripture, you will get a filter in your heart that will enable you to spot liars. This is just for free. When angels appear without their glory, they look just like men. You find incidences of this when the angel appeared to speak to Gideon. All Gideon saw was a young man talking to him, and it wasn't until the angel ascended in a flame of fire after Gideon had made the offering that he knew this is an angel of the Lord. The same thing happened when the angel came to bring information to Mary. He was not glowing. Mary did not faint. Mary did not have an episode. She was able to speak with the angel normally. The same thing happened when the angel came to bring news of the birth of John the Baptist. His father, Zechariah, was having a normal conversation with what he th thought was a man. He even went so far as to question the angel and show obvious unbelief and say, well, how do I know these things will be? That is when the angel identified himself and said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of the most high God. And for this, you have done this unbelief. Your tongue shall be shut up and you will not speak until the child is born. The same thing happened when the angel came to bring information to Samson's mother that she would bear a holy child who would be God's judge for his people. All she told her husband was, I was out in the field today and a man told me that I'm going to get pregnant. You know, we haven't been able to have a child, but this man said it. And the father said, who is this man? It wasn't until they had both seen the angel and he disappeared in front of them that they said, this is an angel of the Lord. And they also said, and now we're going to die. Therefore, scripture has more than enough precedent to show that the angels of God are able to appear unto men looking like nothing more than men. And what the Lord has shown me is that when these angels stand before women, even in these final days, it will take the spirit of the Lord to cause those women to keep their clothing on and to be able to resist them. They will be some of the most amazing looking, beautiful human beings like that you have ever seen. And so the righteous angels are speaking and notice how they approach the Lord. They do not approach the Lord as most of us do. Most of us will have a problem or an issue or a need and simply go to God and start talking to God as if God is our equal, as if God is our mate, as if God is just someone, mostly because of the church culture in the United States, that we can just walk right up to. People have been told that God is like a daddy mixed with a Santa, and therefore there's no need for reverence, there's no need for the fear of the Lord, and there's no need to bring honor, praise, and glory to the name of the Lord, which is actually the proper format of prayer before you start asking. Yet the angels come and they tell God how glorious he is. They tell him how timeless he is. They tell him how holy and blessed his name is unto all ages. They tell him, honoring him and saying that we know your sight is perfect. We know that you have seen all things. They bless the Lord and they reverence him at length for the entire chapter nine before they finally say one or two words at the end about the situation. 
The lawless ones are destroying the earth, Lord. The cries of men are rising up to us because of the lawless deeds of the giants, the children of the fallen. What are the lawless deeds that the giants were doing? The Bible says that they laid claim to the earth and they made such demands on people that people were forced to serve them like servants. People had to raise lots of animals and spend a lot of time roasting 20 goats to feed one of them. And the Bible says, um, not the Bible, but the book of Enoch, I've covered it in previous videos. I think the video about Og of Bashan, if you have problems following the storyline, go back and start to watch where the videos say the fallen, the fallen, and make sure you watch the video about Og of Bashan. It gives a lot of information. And I went through both the scripture and the book of Enoch to show and prove the things that the Lord is saying. And so they were forcing people to work and the wickedness and the evil of what they were doing reached to the point where they began to eat people. The, the, the book of Enoch says that when they had consumed the substance of the earth to the point that people were not producing enough for them, they began to eat man. And if you look in what is called mythology today, you will find tons of stories in all cultures about huge man-like creatures that used to eat people. People used to scare their children and tell them, if you are bad, the giant will get you. If you are bad, the dragon will get you. Which as the Lord says, this modern generation is very hard-hearted and very stubborn and takes the things that their ancestors had to battle and fight for survivor for survival as a joke, as a myth. He says, we teach it as discourse, which just means something curious for conversation. And we do not have the wisdom and the understanding to know that the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again. And I can tell you that the biggest problem in Noah's day was not the fact of the flood. The biggest problem in Noah's day was why the flood was necessary because huge creatures, Enoch says 3000 L's which is skyscraper height and below in various dimensions were walking upon the earth. They had laid claim to everything that humanity had. They had subjugated humanity to the level of slaves. And because of the wickedness that their fathers, the fallen angels taught, the, the book of Enoch says that the whole earth had become corrupted, polluted. And the only thought that was in the heart of man continually was evil, evil to start killing because the fallen angel taught men how to make weapons. It says that they taught them enchantments. This is the entry of witchcraft and sorcery into the earth. It says that another angel, angel taught them the resolution of enchantments. To resolve an enchantment means that one person puts a spell and then the other angel teaches you how to break the spell. So now you understand why in this earth people talk about, oh, she's a black witch. Oh, she's a white witch. I only do good spells. The so-called white witchcraft is just as cursed as the black witchcraft because these are the revelations, as the angels called it, the secrets of heaven, the eternal secrets hidden in heaven, which men were striving to learn. These knowledges, the knowledge of good and evil is the knowledge that is preserved for the father alone. God alone knows the heights of righteousness and the depths of wickedness. And such knowledge is too dangerous and high for human beings to possess. This is why when Adam and Eve took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they entered into the same corrupted state as descendants would later enter into when the angels began to teach them secrets of heaven. This is the reason that God put them out of the garden because he said in their fallen and corrupted state where they can now rise to the knowledge of how much good can exist and they can also descend to the basest level capable of the human soul. I cannot allow them to touch the tree of eternal life. There will be no hope to renew them. They will become eternal in this fallen state. 
and they will never be able to be renewed to the state of innocence and righteousness that I, their maker, desired for them. And so the Lord was said, the Lord was told by the angels, you see all things and yet you suffer them and you do not tell us what we are to do in regard to this. I will stop the video here and I will look at the next chapter in another video. But before I end this video, I will share the few things that the Lord gave me for today. He said to make it known that the fallen angels will set foot on this earth again and they will lay claim to it as they once did as their domain. So as we will go through Enoch, you will find that the fallen angels were laid in chains until the day of judgment. But in the day of judgment, they will be released for a season upon the earth and they will rise, these creatures, and they will lay claim to this earth as if it was still theirs. The Lord also said that there will be reverse engineering of the pharaohs and other mummified remains. The pharaohs had this curious belief. Among the pharaohs, when you died, you were not just cast into a hole. You were, you were put into a very stylized tomb. You were given your own pyramid. And in that pyramid, they put a lot of things that you, do, you would not think a dead person would need. They put gold and silver and lots of fancy clothes, all the beautiful, majestic robes that the pharaoh used to own. They also, believe it or not, put male and female servants who were still alive. That's right. When the pharaoh died, everyone who used to crush his grapes and bake his bread and wash his clothes and serve him in any way, the entire court, or at least those of them that were seen as necessary to wait on a king when he woke up in his next life, they would be put into the tomb. And while the Pharaoh was dead, those people would be in that tomb starving until they died. So pharaohs in the ancient times had this very strong and pervasive belief that they would rise again. And I want to just ask you, if you've stuck with the video this long, where do you think they got that idea? In the ancient world, the fallen, even in those days, were there. They taught them these things how to preserve the body in such a way that it would not rot for many years. This is why you see with our normal embalming and everything else after we pass away, if you dig up the, the coffin after a while and look in it, there's nothing but dust and teeth. Even the bones will rot after a while. But these people come from centuries upon centuries upon centuries ago, and their bones are still in a well-preserved state. They were taught this art by people who lived among them who were not people, people who had the understanding of how to keep these things because they knew that in the time of the end, there would be technology that is able to bring back these things. I'm not very well versed in what reverse engineering is. This is just a phrase that the Lord has given me. But if engineering means to build something forward, reverse engineering means to take something apart from its present state and roll it back by looking at how it was made until you get to its original state. So pharaohs and other remains will be raised up and that includes these creatures that we know as dinosaurs. Anything that has rotted remains that still remains on this earth, on this earth, those in charge of this type of technology are going to break the laws of God and attempt to play God and raise the dead and bring these things back. The last thing that the Lord spoke to me is from two weeks ago. I did not share it at the time, but I will now. The Lord says that mass abductions are going to start happening around the world. And I actually saw visions of this. Things are going to start happening where people are going to be taken in a group. I've warned about, especially those people who have so much love for UFOs and aliens that they go off into the trees in groups of 30 or 40 with their cocoa and their blankets and sandwiches. And they sit there all night stargazing and focusing their collective mental energy, trying to call down and say, oh, we love you. We want you to come and be with us. These things are so dangerous. The deception that is in this earth is going to be the correct 
corruption and the destruction of humanity. I can say, and I have spoken it many times in the prophetic words of the Lord, the Lord says that the things humanity loves will destroy them. So you that has watched Walking Dead season one to season 800 and your fascination and love for zombies is so strong, whether you are a Christian or not, when the reanime come upon this earth, don't scream, don't cry, don't complain. Embrace them because it is the corrupted desire of your heart that will actually bring them upon this earth. The Lord says that the things people love, their sin, will destroy them. Those who love Halloween and witches and ghouls, when those things wake up in the final times and walk with their 10, 15, or 35 toes upon this earth, don't cry and don't make any resistance, for by our sin shall we be captured. So those who do not have a desire to participate in this, do not participate in this. Mass abductions will happen. The Lord says that people will not be taken one by one anymore. So we know that traditionally one person will be taken or a man and his wife maybe or a father and his son will be taken. And when they come back, people gaslight them until they don't want to speak. People mock them and they shun them because they are so convinced and they are so committed to what happened to them. They want understanding. They want acceptance. They want answers because it is not right for these things to happen to humanity. Yet... They would always be shut up. The victims would be set aside. They would be hidden. They would be threatened by the government. But the Lord says that mass abduction will become a part of everyday life. And when people start being taken in large groups and coming back with the same experiences and insisting that what has happened to them has happened to them, God says that there will be more mainstream coverage of these strange, strange sightings. And the media will play a strong role in what he called grooming. So the media is definitely going to start to give more credence to these things when people start to go missing in groups and come back in groups and share their experiences. We are in a highly connected world now. Data, internet, videos, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is that we have, these things will spread like wildfire in the international community and the media is going to stoke this fire, but the Lord says that it is a form of preparation and grooming. Why? It is to prepare the minds of the people for the day that these things will be revealed and told. As they constantly say in the movies, they are among us. May God's people understand that they are among us, but they are here for no good purpose. And if you love your skin and you want to keep it on your body, may you hear what the Lord God is saying. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please take the video to heart. I think that will be the best reward for me. If I have to share things that I really do not want to share, may you take these things to heart and by them preserve yourself and your family. I thank you for being here with me and until I see you again, God bless you. Goodbye.